Say I want to link these drop down lists here to this column of data. I don't want any duplicates. How am I going to do it? I'm going to show you. Right, so I've got on screen an absolute shed load of data here. So it's about 8,000 rows. And I've put all that on just to demonstrate that this can, system can cope with pretty much anything. So what I want to do is I want these drop down lists to link to this column product subcategory, but I don't want all these duplicates. At the moment, if I just show you a data validation list, for example, data validation, if I say that I want my source to be all of that and OK it, go back home and click down, we've got a ton of duplicates in there. And not only that, <laughs> we don't even get it finishes on uh, it's reached its maximum. So we don't want that at all. What we want is a unique list. First off, you could do it manually. So if I just insert a couple of rows because I'm going to be putting my list somewhere around here. So I want it roughly the same width as that, 212. I could just take that list, holding Control Shift and Down Arrow. Control C, back up here, paste it. And then I could go to uh, Data, Remove Duplicates. Make sure only that's selected. It says it had a header row. OK, there we go. I now have a unique list and I can just link. I'm just using this one as an example, but I can now link it to there. Right, job done, but not exactly dynamic, is it? Um, anything that happens to this list in the future, you know, new product subcategories come in. Nothing happens here. It's not in any way linked. So. We want to link this up, but we're going to use some VBA to effectively kind of recreate that and refresh it at will. If I remove that, so the first thing I want to do is change this data into a table. So Control T, hit Enter, that'll give me a table. Don't really like the look of it, I'll pick this one. Why did I do that? Right, the reason I did that is because when you add new names, anything to the bottom of the table, the table, so I'm going to do this, the table expands. Just do control. So that's going to be quite a useful property because what it means is if we're linking anything to this table, we're automatically taking account of any new data that's coming in. So product subcategory is the one I want to use. So what I'm going to do is highlight all of that so I use the arrow keys and control shift to do that. And then over here, I'm going to give that a named range. I'm going to call this product uh, subcat. Perhaps even put all on the end. And then hit the enter key. And that will register that as a named range. So when I click on that, I've got some other ones I put in actually earlier, right? Which I'll delete in a minute so that it doesn't confuse everybody. The bottom of that list is there, the named range. And if I put uh, an extra item on the bottom here, up for Excel, table expands, go back to it, name range is also automatically expanded. So I'm just going to undo that. And I'm also just quickly going to remove those other name range so they don't cause confusion later. I'm going to delete this data sheet completely as well, which we don't need it. So I'm going to now record a macro of me copying that name range, pasting it into column E and removing the duplicates. And then we'll use that as the base start of our code. Right, so we go to the developer tab, set this on pretty much all my videos just in case you can't see that. Click up there, more commands, go to customize ribbon and tick developer there. Either that or Google it if you didn't catch that. Record macro, just going to leave it in the same workbook. Right, so. I'm going to select the name range, I'm going to copy it, pick up at home, go there, paste the values, go to data, hit remove duplicates, hit OK. There, and stop that now. Sorry, <laughs> stop that macro. I just need to re retitle it product subcategory. Right, so that's that job done. We'll view that code now. So if we hit Visual Basic there, the one I just recorded is this 
macro two. Now, what the way they've done it, I'm just going to separate all this code out because most of it we're not going to need at all, right? We're going to do stuff which is much easier indeed. We don't need that, that's just what it's selecting at the end. This is the absolute key piece of code because this takes this range and removes the duplicates. The way this says it, it says select the name range and go to it, copy it, go to E1 and paste it, values, right? Then switch off the paste stuff and then remove the duplicates. Reasonable piece of code, but we can certainly improve it massively. So first off, we can use uh, this name range here and we can just put, uh, so we're using uh, the sheet name. I always like to use the sheet one. It's just called sheet one dot range. Um, and then we can paste in that and we can say, copy it directly. You don't need to select it or anything like that. What I'm going to do actually is I'm going to actually turn this list into a table too. So I'm going to make that a table. This is called table five. We want to paste stuff in at E2 now. So we had it E1. So we could just do E2 and paste special there. I'm just going to change that to an entire column reference so that we're not going to miss out, you know, we're not going to um, have a kind of problem there when it comes to, you know, list length. And that, that should kind of work, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove those there. I just did control minus, then remove from the table. So now I'm just going to whack this macro onto a button. So here a moment and link it to macro two and obviously you want and it's called button six well goodness me i mean you need better button names on there right debug what we got doesn't like it right doesn't like the full column right let's have a let's have a different now let's make this one here we're now going to call this the list while well, it's got eight thousand rows in it so i'm going to call that name range again and call it uh product uh, subcat list and I'm going to use that product subcat list whoops called it table five well that's fine we've duplicated up on our named ranges so table five right let's run it again right that probably looked quite messy but that just worked immediately there so if I now do take stuff off of that list, hit that button, you can see that's refreshed that list. So just looking at that code again, what did I do? Actually, rather than put table five, I'll show you that it does work. All right, um, yeah. Take everything from the full list, copy it, go to uh, E2 and paste. Now I should actually be able to just do rather than that, do that. Should be able to. Let's just uh, comment that a moment. Just to double check it. Yeah, it's still working. So that saves you another line of code. Switch off the cut, copy, paste mode. And then remove the duplicates from that list. So there's our little uh, refresh button. So I'm just going to add change the name on that button to say refresh uh, lists and I can probably um, let's just um, just shift the cells down and I could always uh, change the color of this thing too yeah we've got this button here I think we'll um, put some sort of bright blue writing on it or something and make it very bold just so we can see what it's doing. Now what do we do? Well, quite simply, we link these controls back to this new list. And we link it, as long as we link it to the name range, it will expand on its own. And then I'll just show you that it all works. So quickly on there, that's fine, yeah. That's all right, we've done that one. I right click format control, input range. As long as when you link it, it's exactly the same size as the current table, uh, I'm just going to output that to 
directly below. So I'm saying OK on that one. These ActiveX controls, if we want this one refreshing automatically, we're going to have to do something a little bit different. I'm just going to set the link cell to B16. As long as we're not going to refresh it, we can set it to a list field range or list field range, but that will not be dynamic. It will load up the list effectively, and you know, first first time I do it, and then it will just remember that list, so it won't change it. So we need, we don't want that. We're going to write some code quickly to refresh this. So if we go to view code, so the code box I'm going to use is this one, which is the drop button click. So every time the drop button clicks, this code runs. And what we're going to do is uh, sheet one dot combo box one dot list, All right? And equals the range. Sorry, application dot range and we're going to link it straight to that list if I can remember what it's called so I think I called it uh, product subcat list right so here we go so this is all linked up that's slightly unfortunate but that's done that um, because I find when you widen things like this this stuff sort of widens and then you have to faff about with your uh, widening that that looks to be okay I'll do the same with that one right now we want to test it what happens if we add more product subcategories to the bottom of our data table so new data comes in there's new stuff all time so let's just put in up for Excel uh, product uh, one all right and I'm gonna have product two as well and uh, why not go the whole hog product three sorry product three and product four okay back up here so at the moment of course these are not listed anywhere up for Excel products but if I hit the refresh, you can see the new products appear on there. Good stuff. Has it refreshed all of these? Yes, they're all on here. Ready refreshed. Well, have we done all of this yet? We've, what we've done is we've linked drop down boxes to a very long list full of duplicates. And we've got effectively all fully automated. Well, automated to the click of a button so we can update our drop down lists all at once without having to go in and rechange them as an extra point we could actually remove the need to push this button to refresh these drop downs if we wanted to because we could link it to a worksheet change event now well, given that we're using a VBA in this spreadsheet now anyway, and we're going to have to save it as an XLSM. So when you download the spreadsheet, just bear in mind the macros. There's nothing sinister. It's just the macros that I've been recording here because I want to give you the finished products, right? If we look at the code on here, I'll, I'll edit this code, right? We'll go into as if I'm going to edit it. Four lines of it. If I copy it and I go to the worksheet itself, and if I click on worksheet and instead of selection change, which is whatever it's defaulted to, I say change. So when something changes on the worksheet, we want to run this code. Now, of course, we don't want to run it every time. That would be tedious in the extreme, let's just say. You know, we do want to run it when we get new product subcategories or potentially getting new product subcategories. So what I can do is I'm just going to highlight all of this at the moment and hit tab. I'm just going to put a line at the top where because when this runs, target range is, the, is what's just changed. So it tells us what's just changed. Now that can be an entire range that's changed. But all we care, right, is if something's been added to the product subcategory column, right? Right, if we say target dot column 
equals 11, which is K. So in other words, if something's changed in column K, and there are ways of making that dynamic just in case somebody starts inserting columns on your spreadsheet. I'm not going to go into that beyond the scape of this video, let's just say. So if it's uh, column 11 that's changed, we then need to end if, and because what we've done here is, oh, sorry, I'll tell you one thing we do need to do. Application dot um, enable events equals false because otherwise this this macro runs when the worksheet changes and part of one of the things we're going to do is change the worksheet so it's just going to be in this like massive loop so it's just going to keep running if we're not careful so and then we've got to switch that back on at, at the end we're just going to say actually in fact it'd be slightly more efficient if i think about it let's put that inside there because then we're literally running no code at all unless column 11 is changed. So what that will do is basically run our code if something changes in the product subcategory column. No button clicking required. Now the only unfortunate thing about that is that it will also, because we moved stuff around, wherever they click, they'll lose their cursor position. So just quickly, we want to put target.select back on. And that way then, we'll go back to the original user selection after we've messed about the spreadsheet. I'm going to disable this code so we can check that the new style of stuff is running. So we got our drop down list. So going down to Excel product number four. So let's go down to the end here and put in a new Excel product. So we're going to put in Excel product number five. Five, right. And you saw the screen flash there. And the reason it flashed is because it was running our macro for us automatically. All our drop down lists completely populated, whichever type you're using. All got that new item on. You want to be a perfectionist, I don't like that screen flicker. I don't like that screen flicker. I'm going to be a perfectionist. I'm going to show you how to get rid of that. So we're also going to add in a line of code. What's it? Screen updating equals false. And then we're going to put that same piece of code at the bottom. Screen updating equals true. Okay, let's see if that works any better. So I'm now going to put up for Excel uh, six on the list. Barely noticeable flicker. Yeah, new items on the bottom. Right, so that's how you do it. That's how you add drop down lists, get them removing duplicates. Even when they've got like massive great long lists like that, 8,000 lines, you're coming down, it's fully automated now, don't even need that refresh button. You can get rid of that completely, hit the delete key on that. Not even needed, I can even change stuff in the list, let's say uh, changed. Um, put that in straight away, see it's appeared here. Excellent. Right, hope you like that. Plenty more tips and tricks on up for Excel. Uh, if you want more information on some of these form controls, uh, sorry, form controls, these drop down lists, I've got a video out that shows you, talks you through all the various different lists and when the best time to use the different ones are. So check that out if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon.